To finish this rigid body model, some contacts have to be modeled. The first one is between the fork and the release bearing. We choose the extended surface contact from the above library. The default option surface surface is here the right one and we look for a face at the fork at both ends and this front face of the release bearing. For a better overview I switch off some icons of the joints and the forces. The contacts between the pads and flywheel respectively pressure plate have to be done in the same way. We change the setting again to each render and set flywheel to wireframe and as well pressure plate to wireframe. Then we choose again extended surface contact from the library and look for the right face. If it's not easy to select with the right click you could come to a select list and you could find here for the front pad the right face. To get the second face I turn the model a bit and could select here the right face of the pressure blade. For the second contact again extended surface is selected and we look for the right face with the help of the select list at the rear pad. Then turn the model again and could select the face on the flywheel. Now all contacts are modeled and we could switch back the setting to shade with wire but have to modify now the properties. First contact here between fork and release bearing you should change the contact stiffness to 10,000. We do a dynamic friction coefficient to 0.3. The static friction coefficient is 0.35 and we change the stiffness exponent. It is responsible for the characteristic of the contact stiffness. Then we change the properties of the contacts between the pads and pressure plate respectively flywheel. Here the contact stiffness should be 20,000 the friction is 12.3, the static one 0.35, the exponent is as well set to 2. Then all work for the contacts is done. To realize the relation between the release bearing and the pressure plate as we haven't a real diaphragm spring body yet, a kinematic coupler is introduced in this first rigid body approach to couple the forward movement of the bearing with the backward movement of the pressure plate. First, the joint icons should be switched on again. And we zoom in this area. In the joint library we find the coupler which should be done between two joints. The first one is the cylindrical joint of the release bearing and the second one is the translational joint of the pressure blade. In the database we see that those two joints are now coupled. We modify the properties of this coupler. For the driving joint the type should not be rotation 
but translation and the scale, the transmission ratio of the coupled joint should be minus 5. That means the backward movement of the pressure plate is one-fifth of the forward movement of the release bearing. Now the model could be fitted back into the view and a new simulation could be started. It will take some seconds to calculate the model. The simulation will show the whole function of the clutch system of this simple rigid body model. In the animation we should see again the movement of the pedal, the links and the delayed rotation of the flywheel as before. But now because the contacts and the coupler are created as well the input shaft will start moving when the pedal moves backward and the clutch is engaging. Here we see the forward movement, the rotation of the flywheel, the engaging and as well the starting of the input shaft. That's all for the rigid body model and in the next and last session the diaphragm spring will be introduced as full flexible finite element body.